All right, people, welcome back to the card review. So today we are looking at a card that's been talked about by a couple of people. It's kind of hyped up, but not really. Uh, this is Legendary, The Legendary Fisherman 3, yes. So if you guys remember back in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, with Waco, he had, you know, the Legendary Fisherman. And you're like, oh my God, you know, we get, you know, old support for Red Eyes and Toons. They're going to get support for Legendary Fisherman? Not necessarily the case. So, uh, not only am I going to give you some a little bit of facts about this card so we can kind of clear up any misunderstandings, but we're also going to do a card review as well. So, number one, this card has nothing to do with Waco, because I know you guys are probably thinking like, oh my god, you know, he was in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! and he's going to get support and he's going to get his own record. No. Uh, actually, if you guys don't watch Arc 5, which I you know, crucify me for even speaking of Arc 5, but... I'm kind of scared, because last time I talked about Arc 5, they gave, they gave me a copyright strike. I mean, I easily disputed it, and they just let it go. But, you know, just for talking about it, like, I didn't show any clips, I didn't, I, nothing. So, anyway, there's a character, well, there was a character, oops, spoiler alert. So there was a character in uh, Arc 5, and he played this card. And when he played it, it was like, oh, wow, you know, that's called a blast from the past. You know, he has the new legendary fisherman. So, yeah, it has nothing to do with uh, Waco. So, that's the first time. Nothing to do with Waco. There's actually another character in Arc 5 who plays fishy cards, because he's another fishy guy. There's fishy men. All right. <laughs> Two. You're probably wondering, all right, well, we have Legendary Fisherman, and we have Legendary Fisherman 3. Where the hell is Legendary Fisherman 2? All right, let's clear up this misunderstanding. Despite it being Legendary Fisherman here in the, you know, the English in the two three, I, in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, Legendary Fisherman 1 is actually called, and I think he's like Stealth Fighter or something, 2. So, he's technically 2, and then this is 3. You know? So, I'm not really sure who 1 is. You know, some people are talking about it being like the original Legendary Fisherman's father or something, but not really a Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm not sure. Can't confirm that. But, the original Legendary Fisherman, he's 2. This is 3. So, you know, <laughs> not to confuse you and don't think that this went 1-3. You know? Yeah, I think, I know. I know it's hard to believe, but yes. Konami can count. <laughs> so, uh, yes, they have made the Legendary Fisherman 3, and we're going to go ahead and look at this card and determine if it's good or not and whether you should play it. So, Legendary Fisherman 3 is a Water Warrior Effect Monster, level 7. 2,500 attack to the defense, so basic stats, you know, that that is the, that's the Stardust, Utopia, just basic stats. 2,500 2, attack to the defense, you can't get more basic than that. The exact attack barrier, all right. So, uh, cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoner from your hand by attributing one, the legendary fisherman. So, there you go. And cannot be special summoned by other ways. So, you cannot, can't summon this. Even if it was summoned properly, you cannot revive it or anything along those lines. It has to be summoned from your hand by attributing the legendary fisherman. Alright. So, next. When this card is special summoned, you can banish all monsters your opponent controls, but this card cannot attack for the rest of this turn. You know, I think that's a pretty good exchange. I mean, you have to go ahead and just banish all of your opponent's monsters. Like, bye, you know. Uh, it's just for the rest of the turn, so I'm assuming that they would go ahead and uh, come back, I guess? I'm not sure. But, because it seems like you banish them for the rest of the turn, so it seems like in the end phase they're going to go ahead and come back. But, you know, this card can attack, but hey, that makes it easily... Leaves, leaves the floodgates for the rest of your monsters. So like, he, he summons and he's like, yeah, go ahead, everybody. Let me move these monsters. Go ahead. Get the direct attack in. Get the direct attack in. That uh, kind of reminds you of, um, uh, what was that? Farfa? Yeah, Farfa in the Burning Abyss. So he banishes a monster to the end phase and moves it out of the way for, you know, Dante to, or Virgil to slap you in the face for 25. So not terrible. Not terrible. I kind of wish that, you know, you would do something with the monsters because, you know, it's not like your opponent eggs. I mean, you, you, this is pretty difficult to summon, you know. Uh, Legendary Fisherman is not the easiest card to summon, so not only do you have to summon that, and then you also have to go ahead and tribute that to go ahead and special summon this, and you really all you get is, like, a temporary removal, you know. It'd be awesome if you just banish them and they were just gone, but, you know. Uh... Oh, wait, no, no, I'm reading it wrong. Yeah, you do banish all your opponent's monsters, but you can't attack for the rest of the turn. I was reading You banish it to them face. Nope, nope, nope. You banish them. They're gone. Awesome. So, yeah, you know, that's worth it. You know, just banish your opponent's monsters. Hey, hey, you know, this is a boss monster. Go ahead and hit the field and banish it. Ah, I, I'm really bad. I I read what I wanted to read. <laughs> I was like, it's like Farfa, because I read, you can banish all monster your opponent controls. And then I read, for the rest of this turn. But that's, it can't attack for the rest of this turn. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so, 
My bad. Terrible review. I'm not redoing it. Fuck it. So, before you guys crucify me, listen to the whole review because I got everyone like, dang, that's wrong. It, it does banish forever. Like, okay. Awesome. All monsters. Face up, face down. Doesn't matter. Banish it. Nice. Nice. Alright. Let's continue on. It has more effects. This car cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. Damn. Damn, I mean, 2500 is the attack barrier, so you could generally attack over it, but, you know, can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Ooh, that, that, they got that Beals effect. And, you know, how powerful Beals is. And you can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. You know, Destructor is kind of popular right now, so, nice. But not only that, this card is unaffected by stuns and traps, too, people. Wow. So, not only am I unaffected by the rare key, but I can't be destroyed by card effects anyway, but not the power. So you think that, oh, you can't be destroyed by battle and card effects, oh, I, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and depress and you are compulsive. Like, nah, I'm unaffected by spells and traps, too. Like, whew, what a boss monster. But, uh, there, there, there's, there's one problem. There's one problem. And it, it might be a big, gaping hole. So you can't be destroyed by battle and by card effects, and you're unaffected by spells and traps. That's nice. But you can be still affected by monster effects. Yeah. Monster effects, even ones that target, so, you know, you go ahead and summon this card and I can one on one you or cast tell you. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, yeah. It'd be nice if it was like, it can't be destroyed by card effects or targeted, and then it's unaffected by spells and drives. That'd be nice, because then it'd be a 25 beater and the only way you can go over it is by attacking over it, which would be totally balanced, you know? It'd be worth the time, but... You know, you can be affected by monster effects that, you know, as long as it doesn't destroy you, like, you know, Castell or 101, then, ooh, I'm not sure about that. But still, you know, you got a nice array, it's just you, you, have, a, you have a big crack in your armor. Here's one more effect. So, once per turn, you return all of your opponent's banished cards to the graveyard, alright? So, all their banished cards, turn to the graveyard, alright. And if you do, double the next battle or effect damage your opponent would take this turn. Okay, so the the first hit that they take is going to be double. So, uh, you know, if your opponent's filled with empty, you can go ahead and smack him in the face for 5,000 with this guy. So, not a terrible card, you know. Uh, you return the banished cards that you probably banished the effect back to the graveyard. So, depending on, you know, uh, what deck you're facing, you should go ahead and turn it. I'm not sure how that would fare, <laughs> you know, because... Like, Burning Abyss doesn't just say that this card is sent to the graveyard, period. Because when there's something in the deck, they get their effect. So, you know, I'm not sure. But it, it seems like if you ban, you know, if you summon this banish their monsters and then you return it back to the graveyard, I think all the Burning Abyss monsters would get their effects. So, ooh. But, you know, generally, it seems like this would be fine. Fine. Go ahead and return their banished monsters to go ahead and do double uh, the next battle damage. Or effect damage to your opponent. So, you know, uh, if you want to go ahead and summon this and then blast them like a four wave motion cannon and two times that damage or you know like a ceasefire or something then ooh ooh but damage they would take this turn ooh it seems like it could be kind of sacky so all right so overall that, that's the end of the effect overall picture he is another boss monster it's as simple as that he is a powerful monster but he is the boss and leader of the deck and we have a handful of these uh kind of monsters in the past and Generally, they don't do too successfully just because they're inconsistent, to say the least. So the ones that I'm generally looking at, of course, uh, start assault modes. Now the one where you have it in your hand, you really can't do anything with it unless you know you get the correct setup, right? But it's a powerful card, yes. But if you don't get the correct setup, then you're not doing much with it. Um, uh, what's another one? Neos Wiseman. Yeah, definitely Neos Wiseman. Neos Wiseman is powerful, but you know, if he can easily be a dead draw if you don't get the correct setup. Uh, killer, but killer is a little bit easier just because it's clean, so you could pendulum summon, yeah, you know, pendulum summon mechanic. But uh, this, on the other hand, as like I said, you can't do anything with this card unless you have, uh, you know, legendary fisherman on the field. So it's kind of like just like um, a Neo Swizem, where you need Neos and you you bell on the field, then you trip them both and summon, you know, Neo Swizem. This is just like, oh, well, if you don't have legendary fisherman, who's not the easiest to summon? You know, I think he's a level five. You know, he's not the easiest to summon. You got tribute for him, or you know, use like some water filled spell. I think there's a water filled spell that reduces the level, so you could just normal summon him, because then he'll drop down to level four, and then you can go ahead and uh, special summon this. So you know, it doesn't even count as your normal summon. You know, you just special summon this by tributing the legendary fisherman. But uh, it's like another, like I said, it's another one of those uh, boss cards that can totally be inconsistent. Because you know, how many of these do you run? How many legendary fishermen do you run? What kind of deck do you run this in? Uh, these are all questions that. Uh, you know, you have to propose because, you know, I'd say maybe you run, like, 
depending on what deck you put in, maybe like three legendary fishermen, like two of this, because uh, this card's good, but like I said, you know, that like big chink in the armor are being affected by monster effects as long as they don't destroy, and um, how hard this is to get out, it's inconsistent, uh, it has to be summoned properly, it cannot be summoned by other ways, so, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I, maybe I want to see someone do something with, a, with some kind of water deck with legendary fishermen in this, but I'm not sure, so, uh, yeah. Tell me what you guys think about the Legendary Fisherman 3 in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys next week with some more cards to look at. Alright people, thanks for watching.